It's an exceptional player. Back, back from TI4. It's been a while since he's been on this main stage, yeah. but he has only ever gotten top three at TI and every TI he's played in. Later, Meepo. Seems like yep. DC making their uh, homework, banning the Lich. Drow Meepo, first ban from IG Vitality. Love it. Getting rid of the cheese. Get that out of here. I'm trying to win. All right. Nagamran, a very EG kind of style here. You saw this not work out for them earlier, unfortunately. But you know, the net for Naga Siren to freeze an enemy in place. Great setup for Murano's long stun on her arrow. I think that's one of Mason's best heroes, Murano. He plays like Murano and Weaver exceptionally well. That was old school Mason. That was TI4 Mason. Yep. Safe lane, what? Murano, Murano Weaver, Weaver, Storm. <laughs> Sand King and Shadow Shaman seem like a very safe, all rounded pick. Shadow Shaman's ability to push down towers and have long lockdown Sand King. Nice little bit of everything. Little stun, little wave clear. And also that Sanking can actually also go to the offlane. So it's quite open. They have one support and then one hero that can do both. So the way we saw uh, Newbie deal with the Naga and the uh, Murana was the dual combo of OD plus ABBA to render this combo completely useless. If you get rid like sleep, like Naga doesn't actually do that much damage. It's just a lot of setup. But if you're set right. up for something underwhelming, like Arrow, then if it's countered by those two heroes, then you're not actually doing these that much in the team fight with these two heroes. Enigma banned out, reducing the team fight capabilities of Naga Siren. Yeah, I remember you talking about that, that the sleep from Naga Siren mm -hmm. with easy setups for Black Hole is a really potent combination. And anybody, the second one's Disruptor. Yeah, anybody's close together, you just sleep them and set up. Whoa. I said IGV Sven pick, also taking that away from Mason, who has had a lot of success in the group stages with that hero. Yeah, and watching Paparazzi play Sven is just a real treat. He's exceptional at knowing when it's an appropriate time to leave lane in order to farm the jungle, but also to free up any support from needing to protect him in lane. He actually puts a lot of pressure on the other team because he's one of the heroes that clears stacks the fastest. So if you don't do anything to stop uh, the ancient stacks, and when he's jungling, you're in a very bad po position. Also a BKB core to handle coming out of Naga Sleep. If there's some danger ahead of him, he can... Just pop that black king, up king bar after the Naga sleep and be ready to fight. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The, bul the Bulba Spirit Breaker. Yes. Yeah, he, uh, he had a great game on it in the group stage. Really set the tone. It's, it's, a, it's a great hero for establishing direction for a team. It's uh, you just kind of you charge someone, you say you're charging them, and you hope your teammates follow up. And if it doesn't look good just cancel the charge and walk away. And the probability of your teammates following up increases as you get closer to the TI main stage. <laughs> hmm. Definitely. That, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how the uh, RNG gods favor Bulba in this game. Hopefully, 17% is hopefully awfully high. Yeah, why not 20? Let's go with 20%. Ah, Darkseer. Darkseer Sven, that's a Virtus Pro classic. These two heroes synergize pretty well. I think Sven is the one here that does enable Darkseer to be a pickable hero, uh, at least in my opinion. Not a big fan of the hero otherwise. Primarily due to the vacuum slurping all the heroes together and Sven's cleave. Uh, yeah, well, I also think Sven is a hero that will build a blink dagger, and he almost becomes, he's one of the cores that has some sort of initiation power. Uh, I, I do like teams to have two initiators, so they have that now with the Sand King and the Sven. They also have the Sand King who can actually go up to the Dark Seer's lane and be able to bully the safe land off DC a bit with the Iron Shell on, on sanking and roaming around with it. Also additional counter initiation against the sleep combo if they do want to work with that and not just rely on BKB Sven. I gotta say, I just love watching Spirit Breaker games. It's so fun just watching a bomb in. And there's a Death Prophet for Abed. Ooh. I think DC it. has quite a good lineup against the Sun. They have the Spirit Breaker ultimate who goes through the, the BKB so he can CC the Sven a bit. They have uh, Naga net yep. to CC this one. And the DP ulti also goes through the BKB. Orcar is pretty good here, though. It is, for sure. Yeah, lots of positive armor with the Warcry and the eventual mech from Darkseer. I think probably seeing Frev on the Mirana. And then we're going to last pick uh, Mason Hero. I don't, I don't know if Mason does play the Mirana. Usually, no. I've seen Frev play some weird offlanes this tournament. Yeah. Let's play Windranger, Mirana. Now go play. Then it would be, uh, I don't know. The old one? <laughs> I don't know about that. So maybe a Dubu Naga, Bulba Spirit Breaker. Okay. 
Let's see what these last bands are telling us here. We got Necrophos banned out from IGV, and then Puck from DC. Digital Chaos choose relatively Mason quickly. Lifestealer. lifestealer. Yes. Always a, it's, I mean, it's a classic combination with Spirit Breaker. You climb inside Spirit Breaker, you go cross map, surprise. You sound like you have some experience. Uh, I have experience on both ends. In fact, uh, one of my first games of Dota, I did not know that Spirit Breaker was a hero. And then another hero popped out of him, and I was just like, this game is so What did you think was charging at you? An angry uh, neutral? Just a, a giant stampeding blue cow was just crashing right into me. Oh, it was terrifying. If you knew it was Bulba, would you be more or less scared? I would be exactly neutrally scared. All right. It would have no impact on my fear. So he treats Bulba as a creep. As a neutral <laughs> creep. That's right. That's mean. So the Lifestealer is very good against Darkseer on, on the lane as well. So they don't really have to help him. They can actually even leave him there if they want to. Just help him a bit in the beginning. Otherwise, you can see other carriers that actually nothing. suffers a bit. I, I don't know how much I like this Naga pick now. There's nothing really to combo with. It's almost entirely used for counter initiation. Does he just kind of play the game slow and farm? Oh, Ooh, first storm. appearance of Storm Spirit. Storm is always a treat to watch, just with his mobility being able to slip into back lines, pick off squishy heroes. Sakata Storm Spirit is great too. We saw, I saw a, a bit of this at DAC, I believe. Well, I am personally very excited to see Storm Spirit making a debut here on the main stage. And of course, Storm Spirit, a first appearance as well. It is a best of one between IG Vitality and Digital Chaos. It is the last match of the day. Let's throw to the casters to find out who will win and who will go home. It will definitely be a long night, but who will it be really long for? The team that loses, the team that has to think about what could have been. That's dark. But true. So is the night. Yeah. And it's full Very of terrors terrible. for one of these teams. That was actually really bad. <gasps> IG Vitality versus Digital Chaos. Who do you feel like? We've talked about underdog teams so far. We've had both of the teams from the bottom of the group being knocked out already tonight. Do we give an advantage to IGV? Do we say the strength of China is just so strong here at TI7 that you have to go for them? Or is Digital Chaos the team with the edge? I'm mainly looking at the draft. I think when it comes to these best of ones, I, I think this is maybe the, one of the closer matchups that we had today out of the, well, definitely one of the closest in the lower bracket uh, in terms of how these teams performed in the group stage. Uh, DC actually showed a lot of really great promise and had a couple of games that they were in a very good position in but shouldn't have lost. And uh, similarly for IGV. But looking at the draft, I personally like the IGV draft in this game. I am always a big fan of these like last pick storm spirits that are more or less uncountered. The hero just has a tendency to really take off. There isn't much stopping him here. The only thing that's really that he really needs to look out for is actually the Death Prophet Silence. Spirit Breaker, you can pretty easily counterplay. When he charges you, you can just jump through him, and then you break the charge, you can jump away, and he can't chase you forever. Um, you can play around Song of the Siren pretty well when you have I guess you can get Song into Arrowed or something like that, but it needs to be something very specific. Lifestealer has got nothing on Storm. Um, and yeah, it's, it's overall just a really good Storm game. And IGV with a, a solid team fight lineup, whereas, as PPD pointed out, DC's lineup is a lot more about counter-initiating, and I feel like that's going to be a pretty difficult type of game to play into this type of lineup. So. We'll see how it goes. I, I favor IGV based on draft at least, and we got a roof fight. Yeah, they're coming to contest the bottom. Spirit Breaker is charging his way down. I'm wondering how long it's going to take. Is Dubu with the first rip time now shackled up? Here comes your charge. You'll go through all three heroes. Actually, no, it doesn't. It only connects on the Shaolin, but Dubu's so low. The rip time will help him get the kill. They're moving past the rune. Dubu, he's going to grab that as well. Actually, no. Bulba, it's a one for one trade off. Dubu will fall. Paparazzi finds the kill. Bulba has charge available dogfights with heavy amounts of damage taken. We'll move off the rune, but we had uh, two go the way of DC. Bulba was able to grab that rune on the bottom. So three runes actually the way of DC at the end of it all. I think IGV could have maybe got away with that first blood if Shadow Shaman just kept attacking. He has, that hero has really high base damage, so in, in early exchanges like that, you want to just stand your ground, hit, instead of trying to walk away with your incredible 285 base move speed. It's not yeah, really going to happen again. anyway. They're going up to Paparazzi. Uh, he doesn't trouble. have a war cry for Rev, doesn't have arrow. He went for leap to start with, so it's just the attack speed he's gotten. The double stun will allow him to retreat back to the tier one tower.
Wait, why and not to mention that, he just uh, munched on an Observer Ward. So more money, better regen. Why did he still leave? Maybe they believe the attack speed's better. I don't think that's the reason. He might have misclicked, or did they use it in the rune fight? Actually, I didn't really notice. It's just very he, peculiar. He could, he could have leapt away to try and survive the rune fight. I also was paying more attention to the supports dying. He thought they were going on the Naga. Oh, anyway, he, he didn't have the arrow. They didn't kill. Yes. That's kind of the end of that. Um, let's have a look at mid. This is something that is generally a very good indication of a good start in mid. Is that I want to look up towards the top because oh, they're yeah. actually going for a kill on, on Live Stealer. He's going to rage up, has Feast of Verbal. In July was burning him down quite nicely. He was like Maiden's just been burning to these iron shells non-stop. He has a lot of region though. He has he went flask plus eight tangos, uh, probably expecting this type of lane. Life stealer, in addition to that, has a decent matchup against Darkseer because he can use rage and just kill the the iron shell creep later on and has decent natural sustain by just hitting creeps all the time. He's gonna heal up. Um, I was going to say this mid lane was looking good for Abed with a double wave. He managed to push into Sakata, but Sakata played pretty well on the tower and more or less equalized this mid lane early on. So, looking good for, for both mid laners. Dubu is going to lay into Super a bit. Steals his bounty rune. Very nice by Dubu to manage to secure that. But this happens too when Bulb is crossing behind the tower. Like, he's moving between the tier 1, tier oh, 2 tower the and the mid. Uh, the Observer ones are not near it, so no, he doesn't actually have eyes on the courier. Imagine you could charge the courier. They're going to charge mid instead. Over towards the Storm Spirit, already starting with the Crypt Swarm. Spirit Siphon already going to work as well. Death Prop is able to tank, but Dogfight is being involved in this fight. Abed doesn't actually want to get too close. Bar is striked up. But at least there is no more pressure coming from the Storm Spirit, so both mids will just have to start regening. Maybe bottom lane is where the trouble is. Dubu on the run out, already Riptide for Rev. Threw the arrow out, and Paparazzi bone dry on mana. We'll also have to retreat back to the lane. He needs regeneration too. Both Super as well as Paparazzi are out of regeneration on the bottom. And the Curry is heading up to Injulai on the top to try and finish his soul ring. He's sending the yeah. mango north. He's got good farm. Uh, this is something that PPD mentioned earlier on the panel was that uh, the Dark Seer is more of a, a greedy offlaner that really wants to farm rather than set his team up for a long time. In some matchups, Dark Seer can get shut down really hard. Uh, something like the the Nyx Assassin support role can actually just ruin your game because if you don't get to the Sol Ring in a good time, your entire like your entire build up is just delayed too much. But in July has a great start here. He's getting very good farm. He's in a position now where he can cut the wave because the opposing carry can't counterplay him at all anyway. Uh, great hero against Lifestealer at pretty much every stage of the game. Uh, this Dark Seer has some very nice counterplay potential. And this means in July will out farm the Lifestealer because this is how this lane's gonna go. He will iron shell himself, he'll cut the wave, and then he'll go and farm the small camp. And Lifestealer is in his tower the whole time. Bulba. Into Super, oh, good bash. An extra bash as well. Abed dies in the meantime, but Dubu will team up with Bulbo to find that kill. So Death Prophet actually dying very close to the T1 tower amid Dogfights was waiting in the tree line the entire time just for that over aggressive play onto a Storm Spirit who was sitting at maybe a quarter of his life. And he fell for it. Storm Spirit survives, and Death Prophet dies. Who got the kill? Oh, you're shared. Okay. Yep. That's still a very it was, big kill. It was the tower probably doing most of the work. You can, by the way, we didn't talk about this, but you can see the warding from DC in the top area of the map, what, they're, what they were intending. They're like, okay, we're going to put you against the Darkseer. We want Darkseer to not have access to the side pole because he's always going to push you in. And you're just going to fend for yourself up here while we leave you, and at least he can't farm that camp. The problem is Darkseer can just farm the other one. It's still better that they block that camp. They go in lane Sakata, if there's a bash here, he's going to die. They really want to get this no bash, oh, but it. it will still be enough with a spirit siphon. I had double damage. OK, I didn't see that. Yeah, the Death Prophet hits pretty hard right now. 150 a pop right now. So oh, look at that. And canceling off the clarity of dogfights. Bottom lane, nice arrow. This is an easy combination. Spirit Break is still charging down here, so Paparazzi can move back behind the tower. He's got five stick charges, just committed them there, but Bulba under the tower with Dubu, they find yet another kill. With this aggressive rotation, you expect it from a Spirit Breaker, and you're getting exactly what you expected. They're off to a great start, DC. All of this pressure on Sven is going to have a huge impact on the game. You can see uh, Pavarazzi has queued up an Iron Talon. He just wants to get out of this lane. He's tired of, of being shut down so hard, but he's being delayed a lot in the Life Stealer, isn't he? Mason is just free farming top. Obviously, the Darkseer is being annoying and taking his small camp, but he's still getting his own. 
So if this is the, what they're what they're accomplishing based on trading oh. off that top, that's super DC favored. This move is so good from DC. The smoke gang came out from dogfights as well as super. They were originally thinking about going towards the mid. Now they head down into the jungle. Then looking for Sven, who abandoned the bottom lane. Our bed smoked up with Bulba, and they've seen a little bit more damage. Bulba will provide it. And this has to now pay off for IGV on top to get the counter kill. They can look towards Mason. He is the top net worth on the DC lineup. But they need that stun before it can rage and before it can infest. But rage is able to be triggered. That kill is so much harder. They got to come under the tower. No rage available. Infest is up. Super. Well, he's got shackles. But the problem is, what's he going to do? Deny his own catapult? Not possible. So Mason jumps out. They got no more creep wave to fight underneath the tower. Not unless in July can do exactly this. Creep skip it. This is the kind of early game you want DC to have if you're cheering for them. This is looking very solid. And I think it's important because of the difficulty of playing their lineups later on in the game compared to the ease of execution for IGV's team fight that DC managed to especially shut down this Sven. IGV's lineup kind of falls a bit flat if Sven doesn't have a game. That, that's just how the hero works. I think this hero plays horribly from behind. And they just haven't been able to secure him at all. Problematic. At least there's some ancient stacks for him to work with, but yeah, he needs that cleave level. Forev now has a free lane on bottom to do his farm, so this is a point when DC are practically running a three a three farmed core lineup. Yeah. Plus the Spirit Breaker, who has more net worth than the Sven. Almost has as much net worth as the Marana, just because the skank rotations, he's taken three of them, hasn't died once, and has two assists. Every single one that DC has gone for, Bulber has been involved. Yeah, he got a really fast urn. That's such a value item on Spirit Breaker. Um, I'm not sure if the new urn or the old urn was better. The old one gave him strength, and this one gives armor. The all attributes is very nice, at least, to get some more mana pool. And Spirit Breaker is like the, the archetype hero you want to have an urn on, because he's just, all this hero wants to do is scout and kill, and just be involved around everywhere a kill happens, so you're, you're almost guaranteed to get many urn charges every game. Dogfights and Ninja Lai are gonna try and team up again. They have the Iron Shell on the Sand King with a level 2 Burrow Strike. But now the smoke breaks, they have to jump forward. Zakata burning half his man to do this. Bulma charging forward, creates more space. And the Moonlight Shadow, they can't see him. They have to throw down the Darkseer wall just to get a copy of Bulba. To be farmed up by Arbed, but that gang from IGV, it needed to work. They pulled their 3 position in to do this. That was two smokes in a row from IGV that didn't give a kill. First the one to top where they didn't kill Mason, and now the one to mid where they didn't kill Arbed, so... They're starting to run run pretty short on ways of engaging fights, whereas DC, they have multiple smokes remaining, and they have the Moonlight Shadow, so it's... They've got a better way to push, too. That Exorcism hasn't even been expended yet, but you've got a double damage rune at the hands of the Death Prophet. She wants to fight. They're able to do so. Bulba pulling out of the charge, and uh, I don't know if that was his own joke. He just tra cracked the symbol, too. <laughs> I guess maybe he just likes that sound. And put him bunching. I think some people, some players like to listen to music while they play ball, but just play that drum roll once in a while. Uh, he doesn't use a drumstick, he uses the magic wand. Mason. Well, Darkseer returns to the lane, so we can't chip away at that tower anymore. And they're trying to give room to dogfights on the bottom to get his farm. A very dangerous notion when you've got Forever and Dubu ready to hunt. They can keep the vision up thanks to this. It's the Bulba charge forward. There is an Observer Ward on top of the Dire Shrine. This is what's allowing them to see when Bulba is moving out quickly. But that's the only real advantage they have. If Bulba's still able to connect, the kill will happen. So Dogfights has to return to his tower. Paparazzi's being pushed out of his own jungle by the illusions of Dubu. Forever starting to lay into this tier 2 tower. I wonder when IGV are going to do something about this bottom lane. DC has pretty much set up camp down here. Uh, they know that their lifestealer top is pretty safe. Even if he dies once, it's probably okay. And Abed is just farming away at mid. So DC are controlling this very, very well. And do they have the mana to really do it? Like, until Sakata is able to pick up that soul ring, he doesn't look like he's strong enough to get into the fight. Yeah, Storm is a... That's maybe the problem that IGV's lineup has that we, we didn't identify and talk about earlier, is that the three cores actually all have build up time. Storm wants to farm, Sven wants to farm, and Darkseer wants to farm. So there's a lot of pressure on these supports to make the moves work, and if they fail, who are you going to rely on? Like, nobody is ready to go right now for IGV. The more I look at it, this lineup is actually very greedy. They get, they're about to try and push the mid. Four heroes up from Digital Chaos. Lifesteal is still farming the top. 
The pressure on the bottom tier two tower and inside the jungle has forced IGV to back up behind the tower, but now they want to fight into Exorcism and four Spirit Siphons available for Arbed. No. I think that kill is almost impossible, and there's 15 one charges on this Death Prophet. She's got so much life. This tower's gone. Yeah. You you can't hold this as IGV right now. You're not in any position to fight. If you engage here, it's just going to be even worse. They, they cut their losses, identifying the right play. I'm waiting for Dubridge to slip around the back. Paparazzi ran to the top lane to try and combo up with in July, trying to get that Darkseer and Zven combination. The big thing that is the reason why this Darkseer is picked up. They tried to make it work, but it doesn't happen. Now Paparazzi trapped with no god strength. Arrow is perfect, combining up with the stun of Bulba. Paparazzi will fall, and Digital Chaos extending their lead now, just almost above 5,000 gold in 11 minutes. 2k in the experience, momentum is theirs. But now we have that Sol Ring on the Storm Spirit. Yeah, Darkseer is closing in on mech. It's it's going to be a matter of how much gold is IGV going to hemorrhage before they get a good fight. Because right now their lineup has to still wait. It's 11 minutes in. Their Shaman is level 4. Their Sand King is almost 6, so that's pretty good. But they need these Mass Serpent Wards and they need these key items. Especially the Darkseer mech is going to help out a lot in, in their team fighting ability. So... They got to play it slow. Uh, DC is also a team in the group stage that slowed weakness with going high ground. I think they had multiple games they were really far ahead in, and then they made some crucial mistakes and ended up losing. Mm -hmm. uh, that is probably in the back of both teams' minds as well, that, you know, they, we could also always have that DC situation that kind of has been their Achilles heel in the groups, to be honest. They could have won a lot of games. All right, now there's a fight down on bottom lane. This could be a nice pickoff. It's going to be for Rev. The charge is coming forward. For Rev can't leap away far enough, but now Arbed and Dubu teaming up together. The silence stopping the Storms here from getting away. So is the Ensnare. Charge still coming from the Spirit Breaker, but Song of the Siren. Dubu's buying time for the arrival of the Mad Space Cow. No, oh, the Boris strikes. The Storm fights keeps him away, creating space. For Sakata to get back past the tier two Ooh, tower and dog fights. <laughs> <laughs> just he knows. He knows he just saved his core. That was so fast on that burrow strike. If he if he's just a little bit short, a little bit slower, that's a kill. And DZ can obviously also combine that a bit better with the with the song, but it's still very good execution, I guess. So here's that song of the siren charging in. Oh, it was like a bit of time maybe. Could've they they caught a glimpse of him, I believe, from the observer ward just to the north watching over the bottom rune. That's what gave him a small bit of warning that it was coming. Yep. But it's coming once more, and now he'll TP away. Dogfights uh, will go north, and Bulba? Well, he's going to know that Sanking went top, which is actually fairly valuable information. But this Observer Ward's getting even more from IGV. It's paid dividends already. And they commit the Mass Open Ward, so the Tier 1 tower in the top lane. In July is taking care of the Creep Wave, as well as any harassment from the tower. And this is a pretty simple tier one tower. The DC have shown no interest in defending and haven't got a revenge kill in return. Tier two tower on bottom is what they would like. And maybe they can still take that. I can try for it. They have to commit exorcism to have any hope of doing this. And you've got to remember all the time this is happening, this Sven is slowly catching up. You know, he had a super hard time and then he went Iron Talon. Now he's going to go for the Mask of Madness coming in, so full farming buildup. So DC might feel a little bit under the clock here that they have to get something done. Well, they're taking out the Tier 2 tower on bottom. They are burning Exorcism for this, so for at least the next two minutes, IG Vitality know that DC aren't looking for a big fight. And they also understand that I, that DC are probably not going to do Roshan. So now they look for the fight. The ulti is down. They did that just out of range, I believe, of the Dire Observer Ward. A little uncertain if they did see it or not, but IGV ready to wrap around the back of the mid tower. Exorcism has now returned into Arbed, so he's already got the regeneration from that. And with a surge of dogfights and the Iron Shell Burn, Shackles to follow up. They bring down. The Death Prophet before she can get a Siphon off and Spirit Breaker charge. They're using the Moonlight Shadow to get in close. But do they believe they have enough damage? At the moment, Paparazzi isn't there. He's battling with Dubu on bottom. And that's exactly where DC turned their attention. They look towards the one position of IGV. They infested into Bulba, but he didn't, he didn't have the vision to charge there. Now they're actually just going back into mid. They're like, okay, if you guys want to go into our jungle, they're charging. Go. Tier 1 tower is pretty low, Bulba's going in, where's that TP support? There's still four heroes here, Dogfight's ready as well, Rage up from Mason, the Shackles on the Spirit Breaker, no more bashes, Dubu oh, go to wow. sleep in the arrow timing, Sweet as Sugar, and the back end of the wall, where's your follow-up damage, it's all from Dogfight!
Fates hitting in the Sandstorm. Doesn't even go into the epicenter. Three heroes down. Dog finds. He has the Barra Strike. He'll have to use it to escape, not to attack the Paparazzi. Stormbolt forward. Already lost his SK. They need the vision, but the Invis Rune sitting in Arbed's bottle. He'll trigger it and get out of range of the sentry. What to survive the fight? He almost found a kill on Darkseid there as well. Arbed just picked up the Yule Scepter. If he saw that TP, some moment earlier he would have been able to Yule and then finish him off. Crazy fight overall. It's... I don't even sure. I guess IGV won that by a bit. On oh, this. we can see it again. So there's the initiation. It looks crazy. But then DC come from the north and the west. But this arrow timing was so slick. The main problem with it is that the, the song is so short that... Yes, they connect that arrow, which would have probably connected anyway, so the song ends up doing almost nothing. And it also set up IGV for a good play with the vacuum into Zank and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they counterplayed it very well. That was practically a Ravage. We talk about the combination of the Darkseer working with his Ven. I remember the panel were touching on it earlier today as well, of just like the SK, is he really that much of a fantastic pickup? But when you can back three people into a perfect line stun like that, on top of the combination of the ultimate of the Darkseer, it definitely works. IG, IGV's, IGV's lineup is starting to hit their stride now. This is very big, getting that Sanking Blink, 100 gold. Sven is going Blink next item. Uh, that was something they talked about in the panel as well, having multiple initiations to play with this Darkseer. IGV, I think, got through the hardest stage of the game. The last five minutes were supposed to be really hard. They outplayed DC, and now they're in a really good spot to continue this game. Because now we're reaching that, that point when, okay, when DC want to fight, they kind of have to go for these five-man pushes with DP ulti. They're fighting into Vacuum Wall, a Storm Jumping, and the, the Warcry, which is just amazing, this game. And this was a third pick Sven. Yep. And then they picked DP and Lifestealer into that. So, like, Warcry is just... Incredible. Until there's a Diffusal Blade on this Lifestealer, this armor is just gonna render everyone... I, I don't want to say unkillable, but this DC lineup doesn't have too much damage apart from the physical. DC need a way to penetrate the defense, literally, of IGV. Or else this Grab's gonna continue to swing vertically. IGV have actually managed to swing about 6,000 in the experience. This tells the tale a little bit more than the gold graph of just how much IGV are getting control of this game back they don't hold the gold lead. In fact, for this entire game, they haven't held that yet. But that's also because DC are continuously pressuring towers, and now they're going for the big man. They're going in for Roshan. The arrow will buy them all the stun time in the world, and they have the damage. At least Roshan doesn't have Warcry. Yeah, they have the minus armor from the Blightstone, and then DPS with double damage and Exorcism. Nice play for DC to identify they can go for this. They will probably be disengaging here. Actually, Bulba gets infested. They're looking for a target for MTP to bottom lane. I don't think they can kill Sakata here with this charge. He's they, gonna try though. Yep, if they have enough stun time, the Observer is giving him the vision with the dead paw. Actually, the push back! No, they don't! 135 HP is enough for the storm to live. Close call. Very close. If there was an arrow or just an extra swing, he would have died there. But I, I don't think they could have played it any better. Their layering of stuns between the charge and the Nether Strike was very good. I don't think they had an urn, unless their no, restoration did it. It was, it was on zero, yeah. and Bulba still hasn't finished up his treads yet, so he doesn't have that bonus attack speed or strength gain. But now it's up to IGV. They've been attacked, and they will answer in kind. Yep. The Aegis is currently sitting on Lifestealer, who is in the top area of the map. So IGV, knowing that Lifestealer is there, are going to go for the opposite play, just to see if they can get some vision out here. DC are playing very safe. Five heroes in basement at 19 with four of their towers up is a pretty inefficient way to play. But if they're 100% positive there's a smoke going on and they're very scared of it, it might be the best approach. Now there's heroes starting to show on the map. Sam pings out the, the Sven, the bottom area. Now they're going to start moving out. Interested to see two of Bulba discovers the Observer Ward. There's two locations he's, you'll be expecting it on. One is the hill it is on, and the other one is to the south of that. And the Infest scattered by that Observer Ward, plus the Charge Ward from Bulba. Paparazzi turns, they go for the double stun. Not perfectly laid, which means Bulba can now run away. But a Sakata in the back lines, hiding in the trees, jumps down the river. The Spirit Siphon is on in July. He'll get the Greaves off and the back into a four man wall. The Song of the Siren stopping the fun. They've already had a lot of it. It's a two for one trade. Off. Who is the target? You're looking at the Storm Spirit. The silence is there, but it was a little bit too early. And this will allow Paparazzi to continue the fight with that Sven. But he's losing life too quickly. Arpen has a triple kill. Sakai has to run away, but he's got no mana left. He'll deny himself with a Bloodstone. The small advantage that IGV had is now being turned around. DC getting their lead back into the experience in gold.
That's actually a nice side benefit of having the Naga Song, is when Sven Ultimate is used, you buy yourself an additional 7 seconds, and then, you know, the duration of that God Strength isn't infinite. What is the duration of it again? 25 seconds? Yeah, here we go. So here we see the fight. So they get both stuns connected on, on Bulba, but at the same time. So this takes quite a while for them to bring down that hero. And then this back wall is incredible, but instant Song of the Siren from Dubu to try to get things reset. And if they would have, if they could have backwalled into either the Sven stun or the Sand Kick stun, that's a team wipe the other way. That's the kind of fight IGB are looking for. And the back wall is great, but, you know, the follow-up was already used. They used all their stuns on that opening, and then it's easy afterwards for the Death Prophet to just run heroes down. There's not enough damage to kill her. It's just crazy that she's able to do that without, like, like, it's just hood Yules now on her. So survivable, but without having the exorcism damage to Sven. Now being caught out, the arrow is sweet from Perev. Bringing down Sven. No buyback available, and they keep the silence on the darks here. He can't so joy anyway. So Arbed now on a mega kill streak. And they're going to take the tier 2 tower with the burning of the exorcism. The trade off is dogfights and Sakata pushing the tier 2 tower on top lane. But Bulba, he wants more. He looks towards Super. Okay, they both pulled out of that, even though Perev jumped in and then pulled out. Maybe they're finding their limits for how much they can dive now. There's been uh, plays in this tournament that made me doubt they even knew <laughs> it's dangerous to dive base. Tempering their they spirit learned, in, a, the hard way. in a best of one where you do not want to go out? Yeah, fair enough. Storm's going to TP herself all the way home. Hit himself. Dogfight's left stranded. Uh, are IG actually going to get this top tower? I, uh, IGV will get oh, this tier yeah. 2, almost. I'm very surprised DZ aren't defending this with just a single charge from Volvo or something that could well, have helped he, it. He was charging the Storm Spirit who just TP'd out. Yeah, it could charge It was the on creep. cooldown for a little bit longer. Maybe charge the creep wave or something. All right. Oh, quick blink from the Sand King. Gets away from Silence into Crypt Swarm. We'll be fine and TP out as well. This is a really good sequence of events from DC, though. They were starting to, to let IGV back into the game a lot, but these two good fights have... Put them in a nice position again. They need to keep the pressure up, I think. Don't let IGV farm. Don't let them group up. Just keep looking for these skirmishes with this Spirit Breaker. See, Bulba's going to use the smoke at the enemy shrine, then actually TP bottom and look for an opening. IGV are not connected yet. If they jump paparazzi now, this could be a very quick kill. Oh, he blinked into far. Yeah, he just blinked over to farm oh at the God, moment. Oh my God, that is so going to get hexed up on the side, but Pomeranzi's already down. But what do they do about this? Super and Injulites reveal themselves. They throw down the mass serpent wars, but Super's been bounced around like a ragdoll thanks to the badges. Almost down, the grief will give him a little bit more life, but Dubu controls the Darkseer. You've still got the army of the Darkseer fighting for them, as well as the mass serpent wars. Mason will turn towards the hero, and with a charge forward from Spirit Breaker, they're able to not only farm up the heroes, but they'll farm up the wards as well. And this means pressure time. Combinations down, no mass serpent wards, no dark sea of back wall. Pavarazzi's getting caught out a lot this game. This is definitely not his best showing. Um, maybe this play wasn't too easy to read, but they've made three or four connections on him with a, with a charge into arrow. It is hard, by all means, to farm like this, but they can't have the Sven keep dying like this. Uh, that's that's the main reason DC are in such a good position. Is the Sven has died six times. He started to come back on farm, died two times in quick succession. Silence. Doesn't look so good anymore again. Abed catching out the Sand King thanks to Crypt Swan. He was unable to blink away. And the arrow again, right on the money from Perev. DC are feeling themselves, man. They're just they're going for one play after the other. Just keep going, keep going fast. Next play, next play. And then how you want to play forward. Spirit Breaker? <laughs> you want to charge? Yep. Da -da -da -da. Da -da. Uh. <laughs> Paparazzi's trying to get his farm on bottom lane. He's showing again. I see, you can see now he's starting to get paranoid. Like yep. He farms one wave and then he's just TP's back to base. He's scared of being charged. It's crazy when he has the Observe Warden Sentry still there, but you just never know what's going to be coming at you. Bulba is charging past the Tier 2 tower on top. Just towards in July, he retreats to his Tier 3. And this is the last remaining out of tower of IGV. And they've only claimed two of Digital Chaos. This gold advantage stretching closer towards 7.5 and with that death of the tower over 8k ig vitality have to stop the bleed you're right the digital chaos are doing exactly what they need to they're pushing and keeping pressure on but where do they go from here 25 minutes in you still don't want to go high ground do you like it's a dark sea a combination in the safety of the igv base oh i've been found super these pickoffs are, are, the, are the beautiful thing it's they pretty want dead oh, it's got to be nice playing Playing Spirit Siphon with Charge. That's pretty, pretty nice. You just keep refreshing your Spirit Siphon that way. Uh, what do they need to do? I think DC 
keep controlling the map, get picks like this, get the next door shot, then think about high grounding perhaps. As long as they keep picking off heroes like this, they're they're just extending their lead and, and buying more time. Mm -hmm. You feel like when you look at the draft and look at IGV's lineup that they're going to hit this point of critical mass when it gets really difficult to teamfight into them. That point is uh, it's not even close, man. This Sven is so underfarmed. He's having a really, really rough game. Generally, at this point in time, you definitely want to have Mask of Madness Blink and the BKB, and right now he's like 2k behind par. And that's with 160 CS on that spin as well. He's currently 6th on the overall network, on a hero that wants to play from ahead. With no control of your Ancients, that doesn't look like it's going to be repaired anytime soon. The only way is killing heroes. That's, he's, that's it. He's terrified, man. He's standing in this left side alone. His entire team is, is in their base, now he's going to TP back. So. Yep. He walked all the way up there to stand in the trees, enjoying nature, and then it's like, maybe I gotta make some money to be able to justify just standing out in the trees. Yeah, no, it's... He, he doesn't... He's not even going for the creepway, man. This is... This is, a, <laughs> it's, it's this is one bit. of the best ways of showing why Dota is a mental game, is playing against Spirit Breaker when you're behind. It's... The Observer would only just caught a glimpse of Arbed moving down to the bottom lane, and he instantly moves back to base. Obviously, he already farmed the wave, but... You're right, they're living in a, in a pit of their own fear. I think at this point, what you need to do as IGB is... This BKB on Storm Spirit needs to be put to use. They need to look to fight. If the fight goes well, you bring Sven back in the game that way. They, they have to make space for the Sven. He can't make space for them right now. Darkseer has the key items he needs. He has Greaves and Force. It's pretty okay. Maybe wants a Blink Dagger, but it's playable without. And the Storm BKB will be, as we talked about, just, just strategically in this game draft-wise, an amazing Storm game later on, so... God, this Storm game, Possibly though, is going to be a back. nightmare. He just walked right over the top of a Dire Observer one, has to bolt himself up. He's not bolting, he's actually not going over the top of Bulba, so Bulba connects on both of his stuns. And the Storm Spirit will fall. They were looking for the ward. They put the sentry down, but it's right on top of the shrine. It's the perfect counter ward if DC want to control Roshan. It's a big kill. Now that BKB got delayed again. He was very close. Now he's 400 away. He loses Bloodstone charges again. He's down to five. And DC are still just map controlling. The Roche will spawn in about 10 seconds, and then they can start working no on that. Way. There's Super no way IG Roche Vitality can contest that. If they do, they're going to lose so many heroes. They can actually contest this if they smoke. It is possible. Uh, do they have one? They haven't smoke on Shaman. I don't think you give this Aegis away. It's Aegis and Cheese. The second Roshan is so important in this patch. It's if they know it's happening, they got to go. They gotta try it. So here's that gank on the Storm Spirit once more. It's just everybody together. Yeah. So it's an awkward position for Storm because he doesn't. He feels like he doesn't have time to turn and jump over the Spirit Breaker. But so what he needs to do is he needs to jump far enough to the side that he can turn and jump across in the opposite direction. But his jumps were too short. You can see DC were having a little bit of a laugh about it. They probably thought, you know, he should have been able to get out of that one. But don't get the kills if you don't try. And well, IGV were not either not sure Roshan spawned or we're not willing to try and contest. So that one also goes the way of DC and they are starting to rack up serious advantages for this high ground push now. The Mass Serpent was taking the tier one tower on bottom lane, so at least IGV will get a little bit of injection of cash. Paparazzi has a double damage trim of forever. I, think, I don't know if he caught a glimpse of him in the nighttime. I don't believe he did, but it was just a blink into the trees and a quick TP home for the Sven. And he goes all the way back to Fountain too, not even towards the front. He needs a little bit more money, 700 gold, to get that BKB up. And then they'll have two BKBs with the high ground defense you know is coming. DC with an Aegis Immortal, they're going to push up high ground. Aegis on him, Cheese on Arbed. Who's going to stop this life stealer when he uses Rage and hits this tower five times and then runs back, is the question. Your only hope is he just sits inside of Angelai's wall. Yeah, they have the wall. Yeah. <laughs> He's just going to Rage, hit. Hit, 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 hit. Oh, my rage is running out. Okay, 500 damage. Let's try that again. That's fun. It's 10 seconds. We're going to go again. Miranda's trying to get that. That's just a problem, man. To the shrine. That's a really big problem. They actually have nothing yep. to deal with this rage. He's In just going to keep it. Okay, if you're going too early like that. X, Shackle, forced off mid. Nice double silence from Arbed. Made the control very difficult. And the blink is up for Dooboo. He'll actually get all five heroes of IG Vitality. Group stage DC would go on that. <laughs> yeah. Main stage to just like, okay, we'll just sit here and wait for Jigglypuff to draw smiley faces on our faces. Very good choice not to go for that fight, I think. And the the nice thing for, oh well, the, the reason that even came to be was that Mason walked in a little bit too early before he had rage. They go to Mason again. once again. Close on the arrow there from Forev. But they don't have the Song of the Siren to save him this time. He still has the Aegis. Well, let's, let's tower is down to half. Wait for the next wave. Just don't go in too early. He went in before rage was off cooldown last time. That's why they even connected that Sven stun. He's oh. going to heal up nicely here and go again. And IGV are not 
doing anything except waiting in their base. Sven Mithril Hammer is so close. 300 gold for BKB on him. The Storm is BKB, and they know Song of the Siren is on cooldown, so they can't even ensnare Isolate. Oh. Here we go. Here comes Mason, rages up, tries to go on to Cicada. Albad's committed the ultimate as well, so Exorcism hasn't got the kill on the tower just yet. Fortification's protecting it. The Spirits are close enough. Now the tower will fall, but where is the attack? The BKB is still not there for Sven. He's going back and actually selling items so he can buy the BKB to fight this, but in the time he's done that, DZ of Aura taking the melee racks and they're leaving see ya guys <laughs> thanks for the fight it's a Thank great fight <laughs> that, was our... that was like the freest racks <laughs> of the tournament i think they were just looking at them they were like oh i don't have bkb i gotta go buy it well, it's too late but okay now igb are in fighting shape it does by all means not look good, but they have the tools to take a good fight. They know Song of the Siren is still in cooldown for a little bit, and they're going to try their luck here going straight away. There's Two smoking. BKBs, Blink Dagger, back wall. Anything can happen now. The best way to initiate is that Storm jumps a target, and they hope for DC to respond, because then they expose themselves to the back wall counterplay. DC's flying something. They, they feel something is up. Now they get information. Arbed is underneath that Radiant Observer Ward. Oh, they want to go and give the Song that. of the Siren. It just came off cooldown. They need to stun onto the Nug, oh. but she blinked up. And now Song of the Siren. It catches the SK as well as the Darkseer around. What do you want? The arrow flies in. Turn it off and Darkseer. Five seconds stun. Dogfight shows himself and regrets it instantly. Yule Scepter up towards the air. Four Star is still being charged. Cannot hide inside the Sandstorm. Even dusting it so they can hit him straight away. Dogfight's will fall. Our bed is godlike. And IG Vitality have two heroes pushing up the daisies. DC will come for more. The line is drawn to go bottom lane. I'm trying to remember what just happened. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> murder and murder and murder. Oh yeah, okay. It's like an so, episode so, of Game of Thrones. So Abed, rolling. Abed had a feeling they were coming from him on the rune, so he goes and clicks. Oh, this is like... This is so greedy in a way, right? <laughs> if if Dogfight's instant stuns him there on the way to the rune, that could have been that could have been the way back in the game for IGV. But Abe got away with it, got the rune, blinked out, and now this arrow connection is beautiful. Very nice timing. No, actually, pretty much frame perfect on that arrow connection, and then just rolled on from there. 20k lead for DC and IGV have just. They just not look that good in this game, but they're going to have to pull out the fights they, of their lives right now. They need the miracle the now. Tournament. They need the miracle. The force up in July into a huge back wall. There's your back wall. And the stun for Sven! He got stunned up by Ferenc Arrow! He never got the hits off! And now is all the DC damage. They turn it into the storm. Sven's down for 50 seconds, and GG is over. Digital Chaos will advance, and IGV... The only Chinese team in the lower bracket are now out of the international. Very nice showing from DC overall in this game, I think. The, it was refreshing to see this, this early aggression that they pulled out with the Spirit Breaker. Uh, they made a lot of good connections. They realized like they need to play fast, they need to be kill-hungry because the enemy team is greedy. Find so many picks, especially on that Sven. And IGB not, never, never really got into the game, it felt like. There was like moments where Maybe it could have worked out, but DC just controlled the tempo over and over and over again. There was one fight for IGV that made me think they were back in the game. Yep. DC responded immediately with kill after kill after kill. Took great advantage of their own ability to take towers with Life Stealer and the Death Prophet. And as well as the Roshan. Just a very well played game by them. I think you hit the nail on the head. IGV, you wondered when they were going to come online. We were looking for the soaring, we're looking for the mana capabilities of the Storm Spirit to do something. Zven got kind of shut out, like the laning phase just didn't work for them. And then your Darkseer had little to no influence. The life stealer was fine. You knew he was going to be able to regenerate anyway. The pressure that happened on the top tower, you almost looked at the rotations of DC. They attack the bottom tier one tower, get the kill, and then IG Vitality is scrambling underneath the dire tier one tower on the top lane to try and find the revenge kill. It never came. IG Vitality just couldn't get the counter initiation, the counter kills, and the counter plays against DC. They were DC always rotating, they were always better with vision. Abed looks really happy. Yeah. This, is, this is obviously a very big moment for him. It's his first time playing at the International. He's all smiles. Mason, a bit more of a veteran. It's more casually just walking away like, oh, I've done this before. Just, it's, it's a fantastic thing. Great times. They'll advance for DC, uh, your winner of our final best of one for today. DG. DC, excuse me, put on the gas right out the gate. And I got to say, MVP Bulba. 
MVP Bulba, dude, Spirit Breaker bombing in before the bounty rune even spawns for first blood. He had, what, four or five kills in the first five minutes? He did a great job to create space in the early game. And yeah. he was like chasing the Sven, so he got basically nothing the first 15 minutes. He tried to catch up with the uh, uh, mask of uh, Manus, and he got the dagger, and then they tried to take a, a team fight, but then they got slept and arrowed. I don't know, we haven't seen a ton of Spirit yeah. Breaker at this tournament, but that's another win for Bulba on the hero. He's, they seem to be playing really well around it. And I mean, it was remarkable to see Mason in safe lane. I, I don't think ever had a support show up once during the first 15 minutes of the game. He's one of the benefits of Life Stealer. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was styling on those guys up there for a second. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was amazing. I would love, Purge, for you to break down a little bit of the early game strengths that we saw at a DC against IGV. Yeah, I can easily cover that. Uh, definitely a lot of Boba clips. He had a really amazing game here. The the first thing to point out was his interesting starting item build, put a lot of his net worth into an Orb of Venom, which is definitely expensive, but it gives you slow upon attack, which was used really well in this first blood here. Got a little lucky being the person that actually got the last hit, but the important thing was that it ended up vaulting his gold up into the 400 mark, which means that even though he had that greedy first purchase, he's now even faster than his opponent by also having a boots of speed on top of that. So uh, the first crucial gank that came afterwards was a little bit of a trick play here by DC, because if you take a look on the map over here, we can see that the other support is actually hiding in the mid lane, expecting Bulba to be there. But because Bulba was bottom instead, this means that the hardcore pressure on pa paparazzi forces wand charges, even more mana, and just makes his laning stage really tough. He also did some pressure on the mid lane. They didn't ultimately get a kill out of this, but it's, again, focus, uh, forcing dogfights to sit in the mid lane and to try to counteract what Bulba is doing. But we really don't see dogfights on the Sand King in as many clips as we see Bulba in. This one, the DD with Abed, and they're easily able to kill Sakata. We have another pressure where he ends up uh, smoking very rapidly after Sven showed in the safe lane. Uh, this is actually from Bulba's player perspective here. You know, just normal things, looking around, seeing what he's going to do in the future. And they even run into paparazzi in the jungle. So Bulba was just all over the place. We're only five minutes, almost six minutes into the game, and he's been in this many kills. No last hits, but you can really just feel the lane pressure. And so did paparazzi. It was even to the point here where Bulba's taunting him. No intention of killing him, but he's going to force Sven to actually cross the entire jungle just to go grab farm on the other side of the map, which was really, really incredible by Bulba. He played amazing in the early game. It's just crazy how much he shut down Sven. I mean, Paparazzi, known for his Sven play, I watched like 40 Paparazzi Sven games in a row to try to learn the character, and I've never seen him shut down so hard. I've never seen a game go that poorly for him once. Abed playing a new hero in the Death Prophet. I thought he played really well. Yeah. And his team played really well around him. I think Forever getting too much farm in the off lane really hurt them. Like, the Diffuse Blade countered the Warcry. The Warcry was like their only saving grace versus the Life Stealer and the, and the Death Prophet, but he got it way too early for them to be able to handle it, like way before he got a BKB. Yeah. I'm super pleased to let all of you know that coming up right now, we have MVP Bulba himself talking to Casey about this win for DC. I know you can't hear the panelists, but they've been talking up, heaping you praises, saying you're the MVP of that game. So okay. I just want to leave No, I was just charging people. <laughs> <laughs> I just pressed one button. <laughs> that's all you did, right? Yeah, that's actually all I did. Super simple. Yes. No big deal. Yeah. You guys came in pretty evenly matched, the two teams. What do you think ended up making you stronger in the end? It's live, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just making sure. I feel like I should say no just to see what happens, but okay. let's go with yes. It is Okay, live. I, I, I wasn't told. <laughs> okay, but sorry. Okay. What did you think standby meant? We're going to wait a few minutes to roll. Just I don't know. I thought we were standing by for the last two minutes. Okay, I would never waste your time. Okay, I'm sorry. so sorry. Yes, okay, sorry. Repeat the question. The, the question is, you were pretty evenly matched coming in and between you and IG Vitality. So what do you think What do you think pushed you over the top? What made you the stronger team in the end? Uh, I think we just played well. Um, we prepared well as well, which was really good. I don't know. We, I, I had a lot of confidence going into this. Uh, we had kind of a rough group stages, a lot of close games, a lot of thrown games. Uh, you know, just it, it was. But we learned a lot from it. So hopefully, uh, moving forward, and it feels good honestly. Like now we actually get to start playing Dota. Uh, these best of ones are actually so annoying. I'm like, I feel so sad for all the teams that lost today. Uh, hopefully, you know, someone from Valve that works here stop doing best of ones. Hint, hint. I don't know. We'll, we'll yeah. pass along yeah. the message. Yeah. Um, I'm actually talking to a TI5 winning coach. So you have won a TI5 as coach. You built this team yourself. It was Team Onyx before becoming Digital Chaos. Describe how your vision is matching what you're now seeing in reality now that you've gotten one game behind you on main stage. Um, 
I mean, uh, what is it? Uh, I mean, it feels good, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like uh, TI five, it felt good to coach, but it was like I was kind of just felt like I was helping my friends. I, I just kind of did it because uh, I didn't qualify for the event, and I, I didn't want to sit at home and be emo all, all week. So I'm like, hey AUI, can I coach? I asked Peter, and yeah, so I got the. It was it was a really fun experience, and I learned a lot. Uh, I learned a lot from Peter. I learned from everyone on that team, honestly. So I try and use everything uh, to move forward, and it feels good to like finally win a, a main stage game. It's been a while since I did this winner interview. Honestly, it's been Has like. It been that long? Yeah. No. No, TI4, we didn't, I didn't make it. TI, uh, TI4, we, we like, again, Valve had a format where like the bottom six didn't make it to the key arena and that was really sad. And we were like on the cusp of like one game being the difference between top eight. And that was like super sad. TI5 didn't qualify. And last year was like, I was, I played the best of one match on Secret versus LGD and yeah, we, uh, it was a heartbreaker. So it feels really good to get past this best of one because I really wanted to play best of three again. Like, I, I feel so bad. I feel like I'm, I'm walking you down this this sad memory lane, but you've accomplished so much. Look at you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. whatever. Um, LGD, your VP is next. You went 0-2 against VP in group stage. So do you want a rematch against them, or would you rather see LGD? Have you thought that far ahead? Uh, I mean, I'm going to see their game tomorrow. I'll yeah. reevaluate. I think... Uh, uh, we were like it was our first actual game in the group stages. I guess we hadn't there was like a re real like big first land too on this team uh, With the new team with the roster switch after uh, Kiev So it was like it was okay our first real best of two uh, We maybe had some bad picks maybe some bad play and whatever it, it doesn't really matter now It's like all that matters is the main event. So I'm I'm fine playing in either team Hopefully maybe I got a rematch versus LGD. Nice. So yeah, That'd be good too. Yeah. Well, thanks for talking to us Congratulations once again. Thank you. Really appreciate it. All right. We'll send it over to you machine. Quite the antithesis of the situation over here, Casey, but thank you so much, learning a lot about Bulba. And he does reference the heartbreak, and that, unfortunately, is what we're about to investigate. I, I do say we. I'm joined by uh, Jack, of course, from Jack's Corner, and we, we did talk a little bit about IGV and their adventure and their, their resilience as a roster, and I imagine that's going to be tested in this one, Jack. First question, of course, you get to ask the cliche now, which is simply just trying to understand how they're feeling and what's going on. 就是先分享一下你现在的感受和思想是什么样的。就感觉阵容没选好吧,然后发挥的比较差。I just feel like we didn't draft well and we didn't execute well either. And outside of that, I think the, the follow-up question is just referencing resilience. Uh, you stuck together. You stuck together for, you know, didn't make it to the previous TI. Now you make it to the international. You're on the main stage. That's progress. That's growth. I mean, what's next? Uh, um, obviously, it's a really happy occasion to be able to make it to TI, and then what's going to happen afterwards, it's still hard to say right now. Discussions to be had, I'm sure. Uh, one final question. It's no secret sometimes when Chinese teams do, do get eliminated, they tend to just go, go home, get it, get it done, and watch from home in the comforts of home. Will we get to see you in the stands, or is it is it home time? Uh,有的时候就是国内被淘汰时，他们会呃直接改签或者回国，然后你们会打算留在这里继续观看比赛啊，或还是会直接回去，还是你们有什么打算会支持谁接下来的主舞台比赛了？嗯，之后还没考
after everything we've seen today, who are the real standout teams for you? I think OG played really well. Uh, they got a lineup that they really uh, like to play. They have the playmaker on uh, S4, and uh, they got their... Uh, I just think that they are the team that's going to be hard to beat. You are such an OG fan, yeah. just all day today. You just won't <laughs> give it up. You. Just, I told you. Just all grasp those that. European so You're going to see tomorrow, and, and the day after, OG is going to... Be there. Right, man. Both, both you your know, teams in the lower bracket, that's all I'm going to say. Peter, let me not ask who you think is the team that impressed you the most, but who are you the most shameless fanboy of here outside of EG? DC, absolutely. Mason, there it is. Mason and Bulba. That would be so is. cool to see them win at TI. It would be amazing. Especially with such clean execution, too. I, Bulba's playing perfect right now. I have no flaws in his game. I love IG. XSS, I've been a fan of him since DAC. Yeah. Uh, and the well, Chinese team doesn't get that much love, but he is the guy. I'm, I'm just, I, I just love that guy. Yeah, I mean, his, his name is the enemy of commentators. <laughs> that is such a hard name to say. Just cut off the middle, X, make it excess. I can say that word properly. But his earth shaker today was insane. That was the most impressive team for me, was IG coming in and stomping over Liquid. Yeah. Just playing incredibly well. It'd be amazing to see Burning, like, win a TI. Like, he is... He did... He's been around forever, it, yeah. and he's been trying for such a, a huge time. star in China and ah, such an admirable player. It'd be cool to see him win. And one uh, group of people I want to give an extraordinary shout-out to is all the fans who've managed to stay out. Hello, everyone. Hello. It's currently 10.15. Match has been going on since 10 a.m. We've been here since 7 a.m. And Sir Action Slacks 